Just now we discuss about force of gravity and gravitation. We will discuss that two objects in this universe attract each other with the Newton's law of gravitation quantifies this. How much is the force? How much is the force of attraction between two objects that is given by, that is described by Newton's law of gravitation? Okay, we have said that there is force of attraction between two objects. There is force of attraction between two objects. What is the force of attraction between two objects? Right? The expression of the statement that derives the relationship between the force right? and its component factor that is called Newton's law of gravitation. Newton's law of gravitation states that What does it state? It quantifies the force. That means there are two objects. These two objects act, attract each other with a force. And this force of attraction depends upon two factors. Mass of these objects and distance between. And Newton's law of gravitation it states that this force of attraction is directly proportional to product of their masses. Suppose this is the mass of the first object, M1, and this is the mass of the second object, M2, and Newton's law of gravitation states that this force of attraction is directly proportional to the product of their masses. That is, your proportional sign M1 2. And this force of attraction right, is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. Suppose if d is the distance between their centers, the force of attraction is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. That means here proportional sign 1 by d is Right? This is stated by Newton's law. Of we have experienced these forces. Right? Two heavenly objects attract each other with the force. Due to the force of gravitation, right? one heavenly object revolves around another heavenly. This force, when the masses of these heavenly objects are greater, the force of attraction is. And when these heavenly objects are far apart from each other, that's when the distance between them increases, the force of attraction decreases. So, Newton's law of gravity states that force of attraction between two objects. is directly proportional to product of the masses that is yeah, proportional sign proportional is directly proportional to m1 and m2 and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them.
this is the straight meter, Newton's law of gravitation. Force of attraction between two objects, two objects is directly proportional to product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their cells. Okay. Derivation of F is equal to G M1 M2 by now, Let us consider Let us consider two objects These two objects are we have already discussed M1 and M2 and these are separated by a distance D and the force of attraction between them is let us consider two objects with mass m1 and m2 with masses m1 and m2 are separated by separated by a distance M1 and M2 are separated by distance D and F be the force of attraction between them. And we can we can discuss, we can write this in any form. Masses and right, separated by a certain distance, and between these two masses, there will be force of attraction. We are going to write these things, and right, you can write in your own language. Two masses, M1 and M2, separated by a distance, D, and F is the force of attraction. So, write in your own. Now, according to Newton's law of gravitation. What is Newton's law of gravitation? The force of attraction between two objects is directly proportional to product of their masses. So now, according to Newton's law of gravitation, we have we can say F is directly proportional to M1 into force of attraction is directly proportional to the product of the this will be your first expression and force of attraction is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their sectors that is F Proportion sign divided by this. Force of attraction is inversely proportional to that square of the distance between their segments. So, here is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their center. This will be our second. Now, combining, combining. One and two we get what we get coming one and two yeah proportional sign m one in the m two so combining these two equations we get yeah proportional sign m one into m two by now from the junior classes to remove the proportional sign right if this proportional sign is multiplied by a constant quantity then this proportional sign will be converted to equal so let us add a constant quantity over here which will be g so here is equal to g m1 m2 by is 
square and when deriving the formula if we get certain new quantities we have to define these quantities and way g is equal to what is it universal gravitational constant so g is gravitational constant universal gravitational constant whose value is 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 newton meter square or kg constant or we can say gravitational constant and whose value is 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 newton meter square for kg this 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 is a constant quantity so g is constant and this value is fixed it is fixed at any point in the universe that's why it is called universal gravitational constant so now we got our formula here is called here is called g m1 m2 by and we are going to derive the expression for force of attraction or the additional force which is g m1 m2 by now define every signal, every notice. Wait, well, F is equal to what is F? Force of attraction. This is called this force of attraction is called gravitational force. Gravitational force. G is called to, we have already defined G. And universal gravitation constant. M1 and M2. We have already defined M1 and M2. M1 and M2 are two masses. M1 is equal to mass of first object. M2 is equal to mass of second object and d is equal to distance between the center of two objects. Law of gravitation is called, it is also called, this law is also called universal law of gravitation. Why this is called universal law of gravitation? Because this law is applicable for all the either the small objects, either minor subject or two extreme objects, heavenly objects, at any point in the universe. Okay? Newton's law of gravitation is called universal law of gravitation because it is applicable for all the objects, either terrestrial or celestial, at any point in the universe. Or when we say that either terrestrial or celestial, and it means at any point in the universe. Terrestrial means on the earth, celestial means in the distance. That means at any point in the universe, this law holds true. The force of attraction is equal to product of universal gravitational constant and product of the masses 
divided by e square of the distance between two. That's why this law is called universal law of gravitation.